Good morning. Today it's September the 7th, 2015, and this is CISG 114 Section 2, Web Technology and Live. So let's get started for today's class. First of all, welcome back to this week number three, and today is day number five of the semester. Day number four was lost because of a holiday, but we will get it back in the makeup week. Okay, we still have one more class after the official end of the semester. We have one more makeup class in the makeup of this month, okay? That we lost last Thursday. So first of all, uh, let me remind you, this is week number three. If we look at the schedule, uh, okay, uh, we're still in learning contract number one, okay? We're still in learning contract number one. In the first four weeks, we're in learning contract number one. In the first week, uh, the topic is coming to terms with left 2.0 in the daily limit of our life. In the second week, which is last week, our topics include introductions to international technologies and not society, and we still doing equipment study, IBM. And as of last week, we searched you a little bit of the Lover documentary, which is called Future Technology. So I actually have done this. Uh, I invite you to share your finding, okay, after you watch this part of this class and part of this at home. Uh, I would like to invite you to think about what you have learned in the second week of the semester, because we just had one class last week on one day, and uh, this is a very interesting video. We train you in order to help you understand the idea of technology and the, and the technology that has something to do with information in the context of a knowledge society. So I would like you to turn to the labor next to you and talk to your labor about something you've learned in this video or based on the recall of your memory. And then engage yourself with five minutes time producing some feedbacks here. Okay, this is the what we call a pattern exercise we need to do at the beginning of each class. So help yourself first, all right? So can you talk to anyone next to you, okay? To do some kind of conversations, to gather some memory about the topic that we mentioned and we have discussed with you through this particular documentary. Uh, in case you are sitting alone, like Vincent, we invite you to maybe you can just go to a sit with Vincent. So can you come down to sit with the lady here? So you can have a discussion with her. And um, there is one guy next to you, and the ladies here, you may want to join the lady by coming up here. Okay, can you come up here, join the lady for a discussion? It's very important that we engage in one another's discussions. Do you remember anything about the discussions we had last week? We talked about technology, all right? And then we introduced the idea of information technology. And then we talked about all of these happening in the context of a knowledge society. So you might want to sit in a row with two persons and then three persons to get into the discussion. Make sure you use your mobile devices to get one eye to a mobile environment. This is in week number three, okay? Go to week number three. So if you're somewhere here, uh, this is week number three. Go down, scroll down to week number three. Remember, week number three. And then you scroll down to the tools to track your learning. And you go to public online discussion forum for week number three. This link, okay? Now you can freely talk about yourself, generate some noises of your discussions, and then come down to one or two major responses you want to add. And then you come to this discussion forum. And you click on this discussion forum. You will be brought to this particular link. Welcome. Just go to join a row with only two persons, and then you have three of you can uh, talk with one another. Or if you want, actually you have two by two, right? You have two by two, so you can talk to the person next to you. Yes. And then type in some responses. It's very important. Uh, we keep doing this exercise because this would help us to recapture what we are left with as a last class, all right? So it's very important that we try to do something here. Um, what I would like you to do is go over the class from learning over the past week, which we have only one class, and ask some questions. Okay, this is um, this is something not clear enough. Okay, this is also good. If you 
there's a question which you believe are not me enough, you can just type in something here. I have two discussions with Brad. One is for this, the other is for what have we learned from the weeks of the uh, second week of the semester, now in which we help you to understand this no problem of mentoring. Remember about robots, the robots, the robotics ideas, work, making use of a lot of information. These are actually part of the information technology we use in the normal society. All right, so just go through this. It's a sequence where I can understand um, how much you can capture. And if you have questions, which makes it difficult for you to go on, well, feel free to press reply here, and then I could sort out some of your confusions, okay? It's important that I give you time at the beginning of the class to address, to address some of the things which you should have learned or you have questions about something that seems to be confusing to you, okay? So this is five minutes exercise. Very important. Go online, go to the two discussion forum, and then talk to the partner next to you, and then leave some of these comments for me and the whole class can understand, all right? So it takes time, it's okay. Uh, it takes time for you to write. I will give you time to do that, okay? I'm sure everyone is going to do the same. We got one contribution, and then we are getting more. Very good. Yes, indeed. Coco had contributed to another. We watched a documentary video and learned about what the discovery technology contributed to our lives. That's very important. And when we talk about technologies, we say more as an engineering of technology help us. Uh, we say engineer do inventions. Okay? So technology is being engineered. Uh, science does not discover. This is the kind of things we do. Okay. Uh, uh, but we as a student discover that there is such a technology for us to use. It's perfectly okay. 
this is an exciting way. Not only have we got something from the capital, but a video about robots is very good. Actually, it's about what type of technology used in robotics. And when you uh, look at the technology itself, when we put the robot together and then it's able to learn on what we call the training exercise, it's a lot to, to, has a lot to do with information technology, the machine learning. Now remember, we push the robot down and it can learn how to prime up the game. Every time we push it down and learn how to prime the game, eventually we understand that we push it, it's supposed to go down. The robot learns because of the mini experience not to fall down but to adjust the hair. That's a very interesting piece. Information technology is a lot. Okay, so we've got a lot more. But Neo, if you watch the video in Ben Brooks, technology is very good. Technology means what? Technology means ideas that have been made realizable through the process of product development. And those products have impacts in talk about the robots which eventually will be used in our household to help take care of the elderly, to babysit the kids, uh, to do the laundry for us, to wash the dishes, uh, to go and pick up the mail. It's a very interesting thing, all right? Just like a uh, housekeeper, a robot to become a housekeeper. And they're doing it, better say they're experimenting it in Japan. Honda is one big industry giant to, to see how they can do better the technology of today's time. Let's see. Very good. Erica said, um, and last week I know about the security about internet. That's excellent. Very good. And we also learned some technologies about science, watch movie about robots. By the way, we still talk about how to use it in our life, what will happen and what is the advantage. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. that, uh, uh, Gaho said we watch a video about robots and discuss what is technology. That's very good. Bobby said I learned about some definitions of technology. After watching the video, we learned some information about the future technology and how they can change our lives. That's excellent. Now, let's try to flip the cons over. The cons could be have two sides. We could understand that this is something we learn, and let's present you with another question. That was this question. What are the things that, after going through two bits of this particular course, you believe are not clear enough for your understanding to help you learn further? Now, if you can just think about this, maybe you can go home to our course website, and uh, you can name some of the things you believe are important, but I have not done enough in the class, so that I can understand how to help individually each one of you to know better. Okay, so think about some of the things you believe are not clear enough in this course so far for you to learn further. Okay? What are some of the things which has not been not clear enough? You can give some of your ideas here, salt up to the point that everybody can understand what we need to do more or what other things we can do. Alright? So spend a couple of minutes here so that I can collect some of your ideas about this course. It's important that we ask questions like this because sometimes as a teacher we believe it's good enough from the student's perspective, it may not be so. Okay? So what are some of the things which are not clear that you believe that you need some more help from the teacher or you want to be emphasized in the class? Okay? These are very important things. First of all, it's much better for your eyes with that small screen, you know, mobile devices. I know it's very useful, but sometimes it's too small. And we cannot use the small space over there to feel comfortable enough to use uh, in class.
In a minute, we're getting back to the class, but this week's topic, and we are fortunate that we still have two classes this week, Monday and Thursday. Type the learning partner right here, you paste the table here. So you use control V, you paste the table here, and after you paste the table here, you type your name here, for example, if you are Neo. Okay? So you type your name, uh, student name here, your partner's name here, your student ID here, your partner's student ID here, and at the end of that, you pose it to the forum. Okay? You pose it to the forum. And if you post to the forum, okay, I, as a teacher, shall be able to see that underneath that, I will have one registration 
for your learning partner, okay? You need to use this method to let me know who your learning partner is, okay? So if you can, do you know your learning partner at this point at the design? If not, make sure you talk about the classmate now and give you time to do it because it's very important. In two weeks' time, you're going to submit the artifacts for learning contract number one, and these are done by two persons in a pair, and that person is the learning partner, okay? So you must know who your learning partner is. That means you must choose a learning partner. And when you choose someone to be your learning partner, if he or she says yes, well, you send the information to him, okay? And each student in the class should send me the same information so that I know who is the partner of whom, okay? And this should have been done before the end of last Friday, but it looks like not many of you have done this, and actually not one of you have done this. So we come back to this today. So I will tell you, make sure you follow this method to let me know who your learning partner is, okay? So this is another thing very important. You have to inform me of who your learning partner is before the end of today, all right? The reason is very simple. I need to install the two of you a peer discussion forum so that you can start doing the discussions. Doing the discussion means you're creating an important artifact to be submitted in the learning contract submission day, okay? So mission number one, today, during today's class, Design who is your learning partner. Mission number two, right here to let me know who your learning partner is. If I do not know your learning partner, I cannot give you a pair discussion form because I need to do something on the Google and Okay? So make sure you do that. If you need to talk to your classmate to confirm if he or she would accept your invitation to become his or her learning partner, feel free to do it now. Go ahead. Because these housekeeping work must be done. And remember, all these things are already given you in each which uh, class in the context of the branded learning schedule. That's why it's very important that you visit those links. Okay? Before class, during class, after class and end of the week activity in order not to miss out anything important, okay? In order not to miss out anything important. Those things informs you what you need to do before class, what we're going to do during class, what is expected of you after class, and what must have been done at the end of the week, okay? Because we need to advance our course of learning. So it's okay if you have not done this. Um, my experience tells me I have to inform my student several times uh, to make sure you're on the same page as we are. If I do not do that, it's very hard for individual students to come to the same page. I'll give you a chance the time to ask questions, to make sure we solve our things which seems to be confusing, and give you a chance to do something which should have been done. Okay. Hopefully, before the end of today's class, when I check the page, I will have enough information to start my pairing process. Okay, today, we are going to give you the important information which you should have done this um, on last Monday, but because of the time limit, uh, we did not do it. So we will do it again now. That it's, what is information security? Okay, what is private security? And then, what we need to know about information security and a sense of awareness. So we'll get back to this, and then we'll come to help you understand the meanings of inquiry-based learning, the benefits of inquiry-based learning, because we are practicing inquiry-based learning over the first four weeks of the semester. And we would like you to acquire this skill so that you can carry forward to the second learning so, are you ready? Thank you very much. All right, so let's go for it. What is information security? When I say security breach, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? 
someone hacking into your bank account, or dumpster diving for confidential material. In fact, the majority of security breaches happen in the workplace unintentionally. Many employees are still uninformed about the type of information that needs to be protected. The documents that put people and businesses at risk are things like invoices, reports, and employee records. Anything that shows customer, employee, or company information. And this is the stuff that can lead to identity theft, which is a huge problem today. Nine million Americans and close to two million Canadians are victims of identity theft every year. Mishandled, lost, and stolen papers are often the cause. Identity theft costs victims in the U.S. about five billion dollars every year. Altogether, nearly 20 million hours and over 150 million dollars are spent trying to resolve the problems created by fraud. But you know, there's a really simple solution. Document destruction. Shred all documents when you don't need them anymore. A shred all policy means that every office document is destroyed. No one person has to decide what is or isn't confidential. Here are some simple tips to avoid potential security breaches in your workplace. First, identify risks that may threaten the security of confidential information. Know the life cycle of documents in your office, from generation to storage to destruction. Then, create a security culture so that all your employees and suppliers value confidentiality. And finally, train your staff on a shred all policy. Don't leave it to chance because no one can be right 100% of the time. Shred it, making sure it's secure. Well, I have to say that this is a very instructional video, but actually it is also a, the commercials of this company for Shed It. Okay, so um, let me try to put things into perspective. In today's life, each one of us will have different kinds of documents produced in our daily living. For example, I just went to pocket shop to buy something, and instead of using cash to pay my uh, goods that I bought, I use a credit card. And at the end of using a credit card, I need to sign a small piece of paper. Okay, now in pocket shop, it's simpler. If your amount is less than $300, you do not need to sign. You just give your receipt. But if your amount is more than $300, you need to sign. The most other shops require you to sign, for example, in the gas station. Once you have signed the slip, the credit card slip, with your name or with your signature, then what does it mean? You need to take good care of that slip. The two pieces, one is taken care of by the shops there. They need to use that as the evidence that this customer came to buy shop to buy something, gasoline or goods. So they could apply to the visa or credit card company. They will have the money transfer to their account. Credit card company will, in a sense, uh, create an account in my credit card account, say that I owe them this much because at a particular day, I use the credit card to pay for the gas, I use the credit card to pay for goods. The question comes back to the speed. How are you going to deal with the speed of the credit card transactions? You just throw it away in your dustpan? If you did that, you are on a very close branch of losing your identity. One of the big issues of information security is there is a very high likelihood that our identity could be stolen by someone to do something without our own understanding, right? So if I have your credit card slip that you signed somewhere there, I will definitely have your name on your credit card, I will definitely have your credit card number, in the world, if we be good enough for me to do something, to buy something with your identity without paying a dime of my own. And in particular, at the back of each credit card, there is something called security code, a three digit number. If in case your security code is in the hands of bad guys, with the credit card number, with your name, you are perfectly in danger. The next thing you need to do is to cancel the credit card because no one can escape this kind of crime. Someone would do that for you. But fortunately, the man which is a the credit card has done something extra for me. Whenever I use the credit card to do any amount of transaction, they would issue me an immediate message in my mobile right phone and ask me if this is true. If it is true, you can prove it. If not, they will not prove it. But in many men, a credit card to a customer, they will not do things like this. They will only hold you responsible for the amount of use, whether or not it is used to buy you or 
is information security. Information security is the mixture that any sensitive information that belongs to us that we do not want to share to anybody must be kept very much private to ourselves. We should not share that with anybody. And we must have a policy to do with any transaction paper which carries sensitive information. Oh, I do it very carefully. I think I did a good job. Now, listen one more time to see if we really do a good job or not. Okay? Not when and the things we care about. Not many of us will leave our houses or cars unlocked, or leave valuables unattended. But when it comes to information, we tend to be less careful. Just look at the phone hacking scandal. Many of the victims left their passwords set to the factory default setting of password, which made it easy for hackers. It shows that we need to be more careful with information about ourselves than that which we handle for others. So this is what you need to know about information security. Most of us, whether at home or at work, have a huge amount of data on computers, smartphones, storage devices, tablets, and on paper. There's so much of it we can become complacent perhaps mixing everyday documents with sensitive information, then treating them as if they were all just ordinary files with nothing important on them. But what if these files got into the wrong hands? Embarrassment? Inconvenience? Public scandal and dismissal? A lot of information security is about being more aware of the risks we're taking. Personal information may seem unimportant to you, but to a criminal it can be the key that opens doors. We need passwords for everything these days. This is Laura, and she uses them a lot. This one looks pretty secure, and she knows not to write it down. But here's the thing. She uses the same passwords for lots of different websites. The same one for her social media, as her online auction account, her bank, and her amazing .com account. And for some site she had to register for. Criminals capture usernames, passwords, and personal information from bogus sites. It's one of the most common ways that criminals get our details. So using secure passwords is important, but it's also important to use different ones. And passwords are just the first line of defense. For important information, encryption makes it almost impossible for criminals to use the data, even if they do get through to it. That's why people often encrypt data on laptops or USB memory sticks. Encryption is also used to make data transfer through the internet more secure. Websites that are using encryption have an HTTPS address and a padlock symbol. Look for this if you're buying something or using a bank account or getting a quote for insurance any time when personal details and information are involved. But what about information on paper? We can be just as careless with written or printed documents. You may have heard of government officials with confidential documents on display, walking past photographers or putting correspondence in public litter bins. It seems so obvious, but have you ever left any documents with confidential information lying around? In a briefcase, on a desk? or on a computer monitor where someone could see it, copy it, or print it off. Ever hit reply to all on an email and not check who it was going to? It might just be embarrassing, but it could be worse. A lot worse. Sometimes, though, it's more a case of stopping others gaining access. You wouldn't let a stranger follow you in through your front door. So why do people do this in secure areas of work? It's called tailgating. It might be a little embarrassing to say no or ask for ID, but look what happened in this case. An imposter went into a bank, posing as an IT person, come to fix a computer. This is a very Instead, situation. he installed a small piece of software onto the system, which allowed hackers to see what was being typed on the bank's computer, and use this information to transfer money from the bank to their own accounts. Criminals tried to do something similar on Laura's computer at home, by trying to install what's called malware. Fortunately, she had an antivirus and protection software up to date, and it stopped the hackers before they did any damage. Credit and debit cards are prime targets for criminals. Some clone them, while others watch over your shoulder as you enter your PIN code before stealing your card and using it. Look out for these so-called shoulder surfers and make sure they can't see your PIN as you enter it. Organised gangs of criminals are stealing information at such a rate that the cost of the credit card number and bank account details 
is about the same as the price of a cup of coffee. Criminals are always looking for new ways to get our information and use it for profit. Here are three things that may help to make it harder for them. The first is to be more aware of what information you have, how important it is, and how secure it is. Second is to assess what could happen if you lost it or it got into the wrong hands. And third, make sure you have adequate precautions in place to protect it. Although it may be difficult for us to see the value of the information we handle every day, we need to get into the habit of protecting our own and others' information in the same way as we look after our valuables and the things we care about. Do you see that a lot of the very important advice given here, for example, let's start with the password, how strong is the password? Or how many a car that you can use the same password? If it's not strong enough, it's highly recommended you change your password, composing both lowercase and highcase letter together with some kind of punctuation symbol, such as hyphen or underscore. This is number one advice. The second is, if you have more than one account to deal with, yes, people tend to be lazy. We use the same password all the time. But this is not a good practice. If you have used the same password across several different important accounts, watch out. Once the hacker compromised one account, they could easily find how many other accounts you have. They could easily compromise the other accounts. Okay? And then one of the other things, ask yourself how many paper documents that seems to be sensitive enough that you need to have a particular way to handle this. Now, I'm a person who used to be very busy, and we do a lot of credit card transactions. So one way that I used to ensure that my credit card slips would not be left in the basket for some other people to pick it up is I bought a small box, large enough for me to do it for half a year. So that any time I have a credit card, I just put it in a small box. And I will not have packs of throw out all the slips in a small box. I will destroy them, I'm sure. Either burn them at the end of the year, or to make sure that they would not be in the dustbin. Because if you put it in the rubbish bin, and if we, it is well known that a lot of people open up trashes to look for specific things like this. And we don't believe that a lot of people are doing it so these are the small advices. So what about security awareness? Now, allow me to give you a couple of those videos because these videos build one on top of the other to ensure that the three specific learning objective we invite you to understand at the beginning of the class or the semester works that way. Okay?
information security and privacy. Now, we are not going to watch this, but we'll let you handle this later. Now, this is supposed to be something we have given you on day number three. Because we, we did not uh, use this, uh, instead we jumped you directly to the top of information technology and not society in introducing to you the robotics documentary. Remember that. But we do not want you to miss anything. So if you go to the very important links here, okay, this is called a learning practice here. Remember, we're still in learning contract number one. We have a learning practice link here. And what you got into this, and when you get into the first link here, Web 2.0, that is the very important topic immediately under Web 2.0. So I have to get you back those very important video as a refresh of the memory. What have you learned to protect yourself from identity theft in the internet age? And if you remember correctly about last week, Okay, we send you two important invitations. One is called the inter Invitations to IT Security Seminar, Cyber Life and Security at University, that was done in September the 2nd with the, uh, the in class demonstrations. The other is how to avoid being fished. Those are very basic survival skills that I would like you to know. And these seminars are organized by the ICQ office at the university. And so having said that, let's get back to the business of today. Well, remember, the first four weeks of the semester is considered as the learning contract period number one. And if you look at it very carefully, we have a common theme on this four weeks for learning contract number one that is called inquiry-based learning. All right? Just as what we did for technology, I would like you to put into some thinking into what is meant by inquiry-based learning. It's called IDL in soft. Now, according to my introductions at the very beginning of the semester, I think it's day number one, I tell you that it's very important that in this GE class, my role as a teacher is to help you to transition from being a taught-to-learn student to a learn-to-learn student. Do remember that? Okay? And then I say, a taught to learn student needs the help of a teacher in order to learn something very specific. And also said, it's quite reasonable, that's what we come to class for. And I also informed you that if you could become your own teacher to learn something, that you will be on the right track of learn to learn. Now, one way to help you to transition a taught to learn student to a learn to learn student, it's to teach you, okay, I use the word teach you, the method of inquiry based learning. The method of inquiry based learning based on the interest of a specific student, okay? And it's based on the freedom of a specific student to choose a topic of his or her interest. So it's based on interest, it's an interest based approach, okay? The second thing is, inquiry means asking questions. So questions themselves will become the core ingredients of IBM. But we don't just generate questions. Generating questions is only one means to an end. We actually use questions for us to question into something. And that is a very important thing. We generate questions for us to question into something, and that something is based on the topic you, as an individual student, choose based on your interest. So, inquiry-based learning has a very interesting approach which is based on questioning. And if you look at the introductions of the work you're going to do in the Learning Contract 1, Learning Contract 2, as well as Learning Contract 3, IBL is there all the time. And I invite you to use a specific way of IBL that is called the OIA approach. The O represents the observation step of the inquiry based learning. The I represents the interpretation step, meaning questioning into something of the IBL approach. And the A represents
understands the applications aspect of the IBO approach. What is meant by applications? Lessons learned. What do I learn this for? With this knowledge, I can apply the knowledge to solve a particular kind of problem. I can practice my knowledge. Okay? So today, we are going to help you understand the first part of IBL based on this simple introductions, which I did it in the first week of class, and actually the first day of class. So what am I going to do? What I'm going to do is bring you back to week number two first. And in week number two, we have this very important things here. Remember? We showed you one time the student's response and also a teacher's response on IBO. So you have the first hand video and then I interpret this for you. Today I want to give you a formal picture of IBO which is recognizable and also practiced through our K-12 as well as K-20 school. K-12 means the primary and the secondary school. K-20 means the college education. So, please get ready, put into some thinking into that approach, and then try to match it up with what we are doing in class, okay? There is an old saying, tell me and I forget, show me and I may remember, involve me and I will understand. The last part of this statement is the essence of inquiry-based learning. Students, rather than learning passively from the teacher and memorizing facts, construct their own understanding and knowledge. The concept of inquiry-based learning is something that all of us experience throughout our lives. Growing up, Children are continually asking questions in an attempt to make sense of the world. We all want to understand the world around us, or try to figure out how it works, and we do this by asking questions. For example, how are engines able to make cars move? Or, why is the sky always grey in Ireland? It is our natural urge to inquire, and during this process, we are continually thinking in order to make meaning. Essentially, inquiry-based learning starts with a question. Many of us have grown up learning through traditional methods. In this approach, teachers act as the sage on the stage, passing on information from a textbook to the students in a step-by-step -step process. Success is then measured in the student's ability to recite this information to focus on reproducing one correct answer. Inquiry-based learning is more dynamic than this, as it actively involves students in their own learning. Inquiry-based learning stems from John Dewey's constructivist theory that people construct their own understanding and knowledge of the world through experiencing things and then reflecting on those experiences. Constructivists believe that children learn best when they ask questions, investigate solutions, create new knowledge as they gather information, discuss their discoveries and experiences, and reflect on new knowledge. In other words, students' learning is not based on teacher-directed activities that stress recall, but rather they are learning the skills to synthesize, interpret, and evaluate information. teaching approach, the teacher acts as a facilitator of the student's learning rather than the provider of information. As well as having an excellent understanding of the content, the teacher also needs to carefully plan their learning units. This planning will involve the teacher either developing an open-ended question or devising a topic based on the curriculum for the students to determine their own questions. It will also involve designing exploration type activities that activate prior knowledge and engages the students. Typically, the lesson will start with an open-ended question 
devised by the teacher, the students, or sometimes both. Through the use of carefully planned activities, the teacher will then encourage students to discuss the question and search for their own answers. It is during this process where students gather resources, do their own research and synthesize the information. They then present and share their findings. Finally, the students will then need to be given the opportunity to reflect on their learning. Through this process, students are building their own knowledge. Naturally, every class is different and the approach of the teacher will vary according to the ability of the class and the topic. Teachers are able to utilize different levels of inquiry from a structured approach to an open inquiry. There are essentially three levels of inquiry, structured, guided, and open. A structured approach is where the teacher mainly directs the inquiry. The teacher provides a question to be investigated, and they will then provide step-by-step -step instructions that will help enable the students to discover the answers. These kinds of inquiries are important because they enable students to gradually develop their abilities to conduct more open-ended inquiries. There is also a good level to start for teachers who are new to inquiry-based learning. With guided inquiry, the teacher generally chooses the questions, but the students will take more responsibility for establishing the direction and methods of their inquiry. The teacher plays an important role in guiding the inquiry. This could be through feedback or posing further questions that help lead the students in the right direction. In an open inquiry, the students take the lead in establishing the question and methods while the teacher takes on a supportive role. Having students ask the questions that guide their own investigations is the key to open inquiry and requires higher order thinking. It is also possible to use a combination of two types of inquiry and this is called coupled inquiry. For example, the teacher could begin with the guided inquiry phase, followed by an open inquiry phase. If the teacher understands the different levels of inquiry, then they can vary the learning experiences according to the needs of their students.
some responses from here, and again, many of you have done this very good, and also some responses from here to see if you have anything that does not seem to be uh, confusing. It's very good. I got a lot of our responses, and actually, I will give you feedback on this to see how we can learn. And also, I would like to see if I got some pairing information, because I need the pairs to start with. Now, I have not got the pairing information yet. Promise me, okay? You will give me the pairing information before the end of today. Okay? Otherwise, I cannot set up the pair discussion forum for you, all right? You must give me the pairing information. Who is your learning partner? By coming to this week number two, Dr. Rudd's Q&A online, and create a discussion topic called my learning partner, and write who your learning partner is, student ID, name and your name, okay? Everybody, could you do that <coughs> before the end of today? Then, starting from tomorrow, with your information, you can enjoy the peer discussion forum here. See that, starting from week number three, this is week number three, when you come down to the tools to track your learning, you have a peer online discussion forum, okay? Without this peer online discussion forum, you cannot do the online discussions with your learning partner, and you cannot complete the artifact called the online discussion detail. Because it's here you're going to copy and paste and put it in the Microsoft Word document submitted when it's time for you to submit the learning artifacts for learning contract number one. Okay? So if you give me the parent information, that means who your learning partner is, you can see that when you click on this link, you can use it. All right? Now we cannot use it because you are not there. Okay? Do you understand what I say? So, please give me your learning purpose information by posting on the Dr. Mark QA online right here. Okay? So that I can help you, I can help you install a peer discussion forum. Can you do that? All right? How much you are going to give me the information? All right. Another thing that's very important. Another thing that's uh, you see that uh, the there is a first week of class questionnaire. Okay, first week of class questionnaire, which is supposed to be finished by last Friday. But when I check on this class, only one student did. So I extend the deadline of this questionnaire until the end of today, all right? So please also click into this link and complete the first week of class questionnaire. So two important things you need to get done before the end of this particular day, Monday. First, complete the first week of class questionnaire. Second, go to the Dr. Watts Q&A hotline in week number two, okay? In week number two right here and pass to me the learning partner of your pair. Create a discussion topic called my learning partner and everybody give me the learning partner's information and also your information. You can actually copy the table here which is in teacher's message <coughs> number two and fill in this table's detail. And then that's it. Okay, can I take class attendance now? Okay, I need to take class attendance now. All right. So, very good. This is day number five. Okay. Let me see. Um, Joanna. Joanna. Not here today. Norman. Thank you. And then Gahol. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then Ivy. Thank you. Erica. Thank you. Vincent. Thank you. And then Vic. Are you here? Thank you. Faith. Thank you. Apple. Thank you. And then Coco. Thank you. Kelvin. Thank you. Brandon. Thank you. All right. And then Bobby. Eddie, Eddie, are you here? Not 
Kia Hattie. Max, thank you. Rufus, thank you. All right. So and finally, Neil, thank you very much. Any person whose name has not been called? All right. So we're going to stop right here, and then I will pass the remaining uh, seven minutes to your questioning, if you have any. I will be here until 12.45, okay? Any questions? You need some help with the grace you have, all right? Make sure you finish the questionnaire before the end of the day. Make sure you pass me the learning purpose information before the end of the day, all right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for today's CISG 114 Section 2 Web Technology at Night on September the 7th, 2015. Until this first day, stay tuned.